presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hi everyone, Alicia here. We've got our lovely um, Michelle Gray. Hi Michelle Gray at the Healing H Art.com. Hi Alicia. Eric says hi mom. Love you. I love you too. So all right, I am under the weather, guys. I had influenza, <laughs> and then maybe COVID too, and then I got better. And then now I got a oh. secondary bacterial inf- uh, pneumonia, so a, a left lower lobe pneumonia. So I just don't feel like crap. I got up at two, three o'clock in the afternoon because you know oh. I just takes it out of you. So please bear with me and my low energy level. But um, and I hope all of you guys who have ordered scalar work understand that I can't do it when I'm feeling under the weather. I mean I can't do the service justice for you. So. No. Uh, please know no. that. And um yeah. So anyway, so Eric, we're gonna talk about how to strengthen our relationship with our spirit guides. Yes. Um, Eric, when we were talking about at first I said, Eric, like, do you wanna talk about something about the new year? And and he said yes. And I was kind of thinking he was gonna go with like, I don't know, you know, things that we could do in the new year to kind of reinvigorate ourselves and everything and and he actually went into reinvigorating our relationship with our spirit guides or how to to some listeners that will be listening um some tonight and some in the future that really are looking for like how do i actually do this in the first place i want Mm. to know who my guides are how do i connect with them and you know sometimes even eric says we we can get kind of lazy in our relationships. And it goes, and we get lazy in our physical relationships too, oh, where we, you know, we need a little bit of a boost and um, some reminders of some ways that we can strengthen that relationship because our guides are there, you know, and Eric just says our guides come in different ways. So like we're talking angels, archangels, um, our Spirit animals, ascended masters, ETs, yeah. uh, dragons, fairies. <laughs> like there are so many different uh, beings out there that are there to help you. And Eric we says, I want to help you. Yeah, we forget mm-hmm. about them. We don't ask for help. So, yeah. that's that, And that's a big one. That's a big one. So, um. So he just, he's basically saying to start with, he says, you've got them. They're all there. And if you're worried, because he says one of the things that holds a lot of people back from connecting is they feel like, well, I've got to have a name. I have to have a name to connect with. Well, I need yeah. to know who they are. And 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 that's understandable. Um, you know, Eric just says, oh, it's just a name. It doesn't matter. And I remember saying to him, but. You know, a lot of people really like to have that because we're human. We're human. Yeah. We, you know, we need that. And so he says that, you know what, if you don't have a name or you're not sure, he says there's a couple things you can do. He goes, one is if you like a name, like let's say you like the name George and mm-hmm. George is like your favorite name, then call your spirit guide George. Call your angel George. If there's something to be corrected, he says it'll get corrected. You'll get yeah. told differently. But that makes sense. Um, yeah, and and he also says, but you can do some other things too. You can play a name game with your guides. So you can say, okay, I'd like to call you something. I want to address you. Um, between now and the next 24 hours, let's play a game and bring a name to me in whatever way possible. Ooh. Bring the name to me and let your spirit guides, your angels get creative and let them bring a name to you. And they will. And you have to be open to how that could happen because it could, it could be a letter comes to your door and it's actually not for you. It's your address with a completely different name on it. Ah. You know, be very, be very open to the creative ways that they work because Spirit guides and our angels work with synchronicity. So they use a lot of different ways, like, you know, if you're 
let's say you have an argument with a family member and you're asking your guides for help. I don't know how to get through this. I, I need some advice. And then right. the next day you, a friend that's at work and on their desk, there's a book that says um, how to improve relationships with your family. Oh. You know, and, and so you have to say to yourself, well, wait a minute here. That is not a coincidence. And Eric says, no, no, no. That is a synchronicity. Ah, so nice. the other thing, too, is Eric says, make sure that as you're asking, and he says, I'm going to underline the word ask, ask. Make sure you ask for help. Ask yeah. for guidance. Ask for direction. He says, we're waiting for you to use your free will to ask us. And he's like, sure, there's times that we pop in and we push ourselves in and we give you a message and we give you guidance. But to strengthen that relationship, we want yeah. you to ask. And when you do, and when you do have one of those synchronicities, when you do start to say, okay, I know definitely that came from my guides, Eric says, Thank us. Say thanks. Yeah. Say, hey, I noticed that. Acknowledging. And he goes, acknowledging, because he says it's it's not that we need the pat on the back. He says yeah. what it is, is when you recognize it, he says it helps open up those lines of communication. It makes it stronger. And the other thing, too, is, is you know, Eric uses this example all the time. He's like, if you were to buy a gift for somebody and you kept buying them a gift for their birthday, but they never acknowledged your birthday or they never said thank you, and you did it over and over again, wouldn't you eventually just say, ah, I'm not going to do it anymore. It's a waste of my energy. Yeah. He goes, kind of think of it that way. He goes, it's not that we right. think you're a waste of energy by any means, but, but he says, you know, if you're not acknowledging it or you're not noticing it, then we're not going to do it because it's, yeah. it's not the best way of communicating. So he says, acknowledge it. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I like that. Why don't we ask for help from our spirit guides? I I, I don't even think mm-hmm. about that. Of course, Eric, I think about you all the time. But, <coughs> mm-hmm. but he says what because, about us? He says a lot of times it's out of sight, out of mind. And he mm-hmm. says, and mom, he goes, think about how many people have difficulty asking for help from the physical people around us. Because we, yeah. we get into habits where we think we have to figure it all out ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes he says we don't ask people around us for help because maybe we feel embarrassed about something or shame or pride or whatever reasons we might have. And we get into these habits of trying to sort it all out ourselves. Yeah. But he says something, something to practice is he says, well, of course, is being present with yourself, is realizing when you do need help. And he says in a really good time to to try and to use this is when there's something going on that you just don't have an answer to. It doesn't yeah. have to be a crisis, he says. It could be simply you just don't know how to repair something or you're not quite sure how to uh, – yes, he says, right. so ask us, hand it up to us and say – I don't know what this is. I don't know what the answer is right now. But he says, don't expect it to always come right in that moment. He says, it's not that it can't, and it might. But he says, a lot of times, it's going to come a little bit later. So you have to be open to the information coming whenever it does. But he says, it's really important that, um, you know, that that we do get into the habit of asking. It's not only our guides, but being able to delegate some of our excess work and what makes our minds busy to other people around us. And he says that brings them to the next part, too. Oh, that's so hard. Well, it is really hard. And, And he says, but we have to also remember that we need to spend a little time with our guides. He says, you know, if we're not doing it, we're not in the habit of connecting, so we forget. Yeah. And the the spiritual realm... And the energetic realm is such a subtle energy above our physical realm. And so if you're not in the practice of communicating with it on a regular basis, it can easily go missed because our physical world can Mm -hmm. consume us and we can get so busy. So Eric says by practicing being present, 
by creating um, space, and he says it by scheduling time to be able to communicate. And he says, you know, maybe meditation is not your thing, such as like sitting with your legs crossed and being in the Zen right. position is not your thing. He's like, okay, so how about a spirit notebook? How about oh. jotting down a, a few questions? Yeah. So what if you wrote a few questions in your book and asked us to help you with something and you just set it aside? You push it aside and a few days later you can't come back and say, hey, I'm going to check in on that. And you probably already had your answers. And he cool. says, but if you don't take the time to check back in, he goes, then you've got that moment to say, hey, wait a minute. This happened and I did get that answer. Oh, my God. Oh. So he says that these are all little ways that we can help pull that relationship a little bit closer. So, Eric, uh, how many people do you act as spirit guides for? Thousands. I bet. Thousands. Uh, One of them is me. I need it badly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) a lot of people listening right now, he guides. Um, he, He also helps a lot of other spirits um, that like loved ones, he says, he helps oh, yeah. them connect with their family and their friends. Yeah. And also there's other, um, other souls that are in spirit that are training to be spirit guides and Eric helps with them as well. Nice. Um, Eric says that he, he will be anybody's spirit guide, but he's not always going to stay with everybody in the same way that he does with some. And he says, and that's yeah. just because we may have other spirit guides that are coming in at different times. But he says that he, he comes in and he will always be there. Because I, I come in and out of so many different um, scenarios. And, and he also says, which is quite interesting, is that he's helping work with animals as oh. well. Nice. He always loved animals. Mm-hmm. Very much. Um, yeah. How do we need to talk to our spirit guides? I mean, how how they, 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 there's a sense of decorum that needs to be followed, obviously. So, what do they want from us? Um, what he says is, um, the first thing is in the mind is be open, view everything as possible communication. And so when you're speaking to your spirit guides, he says, address them. And and do you have an idea of who you want to speak to? Because he says, are you looking to speak to a loved one that's a spirit guide or that you might feel as a spirit guide? He says, um, if you don't know who it is that you're speaking to, who do you resonate with? Do you feel closer mm-hmm. to the angelic realm? He says, well, uh, yeah. then ask to speak to your angel. And he says, there's no specific words. It's more about your intention. And he okay. says, so coming from a place of authenticity, because yeah. he says often the quality of what it is that you're putting out there is going to help give quality of what you're going to get back. So he says, right. when you're putting forward things like, um, you know, looking for assistance and trying to understand something deeper about yourself or with healing. He says there's, um, because that is a higher vibrational question or higher Mm -hmm. vibrational um, situation, he says, then it's easier to be able to respond in that vibration. But he says if you're putting something forward like, okay, Spirit guide, I want to know the lottery numbers to oh, no, tonight's no. lotto jackpot. He's like, well, then that vibration has just pretty much run itself into the gutter, and yeah. you're not going to get a very big response from something right. like that. So he says, really think about what's the intent. Well, why am I communicating? Who do I feel like I would like to communicate with? Maybe my pet dog or cat has passed away, and I feel their presence. And I feel like they're guiding me. So he says, well, of course. He goes, you feel it because that's true. That's your intuition telling you that. That's them telling you that they're there. 
So he says, so connect with them and connect with them like you always have. Connect with them like a friend. Connect with them with love. And he says, and extend that into the guides and the angels and the ascended masters that yeah. feel that you don't know. He says, connect with them like a friend. Connect with them with love. Yeah. So are we supposed to set a time? Like, uh, you, you, you don't want to just say, okay, Eric, I want to know the answer to this right now. Blah, blah, blah. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, are you supposed to say, can we sit down and talk at such and such a time at such and such a date? Is that important or not? He says, yeah, we can. Um, he says, but remember, too, so if, if say, your time sit down at 6 o'clock in the morning and you want to sit down at 6 o'clock in the morning and have a conversation with your cup of coffee or whatever, and he says, well, then make that your quiet time. So make that your, your space, your ah. sacred space. And sacred space means you're not distracted. There's no screens on. There's no noise in the background you're making that that space that's dedicated in that time and he says and really let go of expectations so you want to kind of keep an idea as you're communicating you know are you getting any impressions are you feeling anything he says empath listen up when you're Mm. sitting in that moment and you're connecting do you feel the shift of energy in the room because he says those of you that are empaths and, and most are that are listening here, he oh. says you're going to feel that energy. You might feel sensations in your body. And um, as I'm saying this, when I first started to communicate, one of the very first things I did was I would, once my kids went to school, I would have my time to communicate with my guides. And the first thing I did every single time was I had like these, few little words that I would say almost like a little prayer that I was introducing them and I would feel them step in. I would feel the energy start to come through my crown and come in my body. And that's how I knew for sure they were there because that sensation was so strong and it only happened that way when I was intentionally communicating. And then what started to happen was those sensations started to pick up and come in at other times. So I would recognize them and know when they were communicating with me. So Eric says it's like developing a language, and empaths have a real ability to be able to do that with your body and being able to sense those energy shifts, um, you know, in the environment that you're in. Yeah. So he says, so there is an importance to setting aside a certain amount of time, but he also says that that's for the momentum because when you commit to – you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you can do once a day. He says that's going to build up an energetic momentum. And so we're, we know, we know that's time to show up. We know that it's go time. And he says, and when you keep showing up, so do we. Wow. So, Eric, when are we going to be able to, when am I going to be in shape to do skater work again? My pneumonia. Uh, he, says, he, says, he says, Mom, you're going to need a few more days. Oh, yeah. Very and, and, so much of a backlog. Well, and I'll say this too, because I know Elisa, uh, and for myself too, and I do healing work. You just can't do healing work when you're not well. No, you just no. for many different reasons. Right. And Eric just says that it's really important that you take care of yourself because he says that, um, you know, even when we have illnesses and viruses there are times of shifting in the body and a lot of times for those of us that are real busy, those are the only times that we really take downtime is when we have to. When we're sick. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Anything else you want yeah. to say about um talking to our guides or angels or guardian angels, etc.? Um <laughs> Um, the only other thing that he's saying is he's just repeating, um, you know, view everything as communication. It doesn't only have to be in those few moments that, you know, that you're making to intentionally connect, but know that as you think and as you ask, get into the habit of involving us in your daily activities. 
And the more you do that, the more you'll notice us showing up in everything. That's sweet. That's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. All right, you want to take callers, Eric? He says he's rubbing his hands together, ready to go. All right, sweetie. Let's take somebody from the 253 area code. Wait, I didn't press on it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Uh-oh. I messed up. Okay. Um, got somebody from the 253 area code. Hi there. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, Hi Lisa, Eric, Thank and Michelle. You. Hi. Um, Lisa, uh, Lisa, I hope you feel better soon. Oh, I will. I'm tough. Thank you, though. Um, I have ovarian cancer, and in March mm-hmm. I had surgery to remove tumors, and I ended up having to have an ostomy. So in August they were going to reverse the ostomy, and they found more cancer, so they couldn't. But as a consequence, they think that when they had to cut my small intestine to remove the tumor, it left Mm -hmm. adhesions on the inside of my small um, intestine. And so Mm -hmm. been having blockages and just intense Mm -hmm. pain and throwing Mm -hmm. up. And I've been to the ER numerous times and um, I've had probably 10 episodes of this and it'll stop for a while. They'll give me morphine in the hospital and that stops the pain and the contractions. But then um, they give me contrast fluid to clean out my system. But then after about five days, the whole cycle starts again and the blockage and everything. So um, the doctors told me to be on a low fiber diet Mm. and I'm still having um, chemotherapy as well, so I'm kind of weak from that. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been taking things like gas eggs and stool softeners, but I still keep having these episodes. uh, Is there anything that the surgeons did incorrectly, Eric, that needs to be rectified? Because it happens. He's not saying that, but he's saying that um, there's purpose to why this happened. So did they do something incorrectly? He says, yes, there was a thing. It's like an error or they could have done something differently. But he's also saying there's purpose to this. And I have to tell you, it's so strong that he keeps saying, tell her she's going to be okay. Tell her she's going to be okay. He Thank said you she so needs much. To know she's going to be okay. Yeah. Oh, thank God. So, yeah. Um, is, is, is there a sponge that they left in there or anything like that? That kind of thing? Or when you talk about error, what is it? Does she need a second? Nothing, nothing, left, nothing left in there has something to do with how um, your last procedure went. Yeah. Like the. The um the way Eric's showing it to me is like um the steps that were taken in the last procedure. Like an unnecessary step. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Did it narrow the passageway too much? Yes. Or yes. Yes. Yes, 'cause it, um um he's showing me like scar tissue. Yeah. Like um you know, and, and so um I'm just asking him if this is something that can can change. Um, he just keeps saying there's a happy ending to it. So I'm not sure how this is going to get resolved because he's not telling me the resolution to it, but he just keeps saying it's going to be okay, that this will be okay. He says to, um, to follow, um, uh, are you being put on a liquid diet at all? Or on they liquid? told me. They told me low fiber, told me I can eat chicken and things like that, but I still keep having the episodes, so. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if I should just be on a liquid diet. You might have to go on a liquid diet for a little bit, Um, but it's like something's going to be done. You may have to have another procedure or something else done. Yeah. I will have to have another procedure to to reverse the ostomy anyway. Will they go okay. in then and check or Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So that makes sense. That feels right to me because he's saying it like, um, like, like this will be okay. So it's like there's a sacrifice and, and yes, pain and difficulty that you're going through right now, but he's saying there's purpose in this. And he also says through this time that in the moments where you are unwell and you're in bed and you're quiet, he says, listen, because you're being spoken to. Mm. So he mm-hmm. says, says, listen, listen inside because you're, you're, there's a lot of communication coming into you right now. So he says, mm. take a nice deep, know you're going to be okay and take this opportunity to be real quiet with yourself and listen. Okay. When, what is this next procedure going to be? Um, I'm going through chemo now and my numbers aren't down far enough to say that I have no cancer left, but nothing is showing up on the CT scans. Oh. Um, but last time nothing showed up on the CT, CT scan and then they opened me up and they saw tumors. So, um, but the CA125, which they measure yes. is still at 195 and it has yes. to be below 35. So. Would I'll be having at least a few more rounds of chemo. Oh. I'm Eric, sorry, I didn't hear you. Eric, would she benefit by low dose naltrexone for her cancer? Yes, yes, yes. I asked my doctor about it, and he just blew it off. I, I need to that. find someone. They all do that. Listen, it's called a yes. why not drug. It is so safe, yeah. and it's, it, it is. Uh, there's been cases of advanced stage pancreatic cancer that is cured. So. Don't listen to, yeah. you know, just just Google, find an LDN doctor and get it. Big Pharma is yeah. is hiding this from yeah. oncologists doing it and other doctors. So yeah. it's, it's harmless. Yeah. It's truly harmless. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are certain things that you you can't have a have had a a, a, um, a, a, a transplant and things like that. There are certain contraindications, but they're far and few between. And there's even a contraindication if you're hooked to opiates, but what they do is it's a relative contraindication. Yeah. It would be ultra low dose. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, please just do it. Just, you have to go, circumvent him, seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll okay, be okay. Thank you. You bet. You're welcome. Take care of yourself. Thank Everybody you all. Send your prayers, okay? Everyone yes. send your prayers. Uh, okay. All right. Let me see here. Um, we got somebody from the 805 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. I just got over the influenza about two weeks ago. Oh, God. Was, uh, horrible. Oh, it was awful. Oh, I know it's amazing. Never had wheezing ever in my life, and I thought, oh my gosh, was that from the booster shot? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, bye. glad you're feeling better. Thank um, you. What I wanted to ask you is, uh, if Eric knows of any changes in my life, love life or finances, because my life has been like stagnant. It's been the same for like a couple of years, and yeah, I want some changes in my life and. I'm hoping that this is the year that, you know, I will have some good changes. What's your yes, first name? Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm Donna, and I'm in uh, Santa Barbara, California. Oh, yeah, okay. Donna from Santa Barbara. Okay, got it. <coughs> Donna, it is. Eric says, yes, it is. Yes, it is. So he says this is a year of new beginnings for you. And yep. he says, uh, clearing out the old, bringing in the new. So now what he says is that, he wants you to start getting a little bit more clear on what it is that you want. And he says, think about mm. the intention. Think about why you want it, what you want to do with it. He says, use your visualization ability because the energy is supporting new beginnings for you. And he's also showing relationships. He says, have oh. patience with it because it's coming. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, that's oh, awesome. I had a vision once. I, I was feeling all this. I, I lost my nephew. He was 19, a tragic mm. accident. 
Mm. It was very hard and hard on the whole family, of course. But um, Mm -hmm. I was feeling all this sadness in my heart. It was just over. It it, it was the heartbreak. I I felt, oh, I've never experienced such heartbreak. I was sitting up in my bed. And then all of a sudden, it was like going through a tunnel. And this man in black and white robes was rolling in the tunnels. And then he was right in front of me. It, It had to have been my third eye. He was right there. And it was the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, oh, I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, what was it? My rescue. Eric, huh? what was that? Eric, what was that? Who? Oh, oh that was a guide. Yeah. That was a guide. Oh. That was a guide, and it, it, right in line with what we're talking about tonight. And so he says, um, you know, if you keep pursuing that connection, and yeah. and you know, keep communicating with that connection. You got a whole, like he said, a whole bunch of things in your in your hat trick. He's like showing me the magician's hat. Like there's all oh. kinds of things in there. Yeah. Oh, Very good. nice. Yeah. Very I've never seen Thank such a beautiful person. I hope that when I pass, I see this person again. Oh, because... you will. You will. Oh, will. Yeah. Thanks, Donnie, for calling in. Santa Barbara show. Bye, Donna. All right, uh, 651 area code. Hi there. How you doing? What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Christiana from Minnesota. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. Um, I don't have a really specific question, um, but I was interested in hearing from a guide if you could connect with any of them and I'd be curious to know what, if they have a name or if they'd like to be called something. Just want to know mm-hmm. if there's a message. Are you seeing the number 33 a lot? Um, I don't think so. Okay, well, what, what? I think it. the number three. So it's, well, three uh, is yeah. like okay. significant well, to me. All right. So the threes, the double threes, why they're showing me that is that's how they show me ascended masters. Um, let me see if I can get Eric to link me in with one. Um, okay, now I don't know this one's name. Um, it's like an Egyptian uh, an Egyptian god. Um, I want to say Thor, but I know it's not Thor. Um, okay, so this one is uh, to do with healing, um, to help you heal and to help you with self-esteem, um, to also help you be comfortable in your own individuality, Um you're a healer. You are a healer. Your path in this lifetime is working through your own acceptance of yourself. Mm. And in that acceptance of yourself is also to discover your ability to be able to create a life that's aligned with you in peace and acceptance. Um, a name... Uh, I guess the letter is it like a thoughts or something like that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Are are you a writer? Sounds familiar. Are you a writer at all? Um, Do you write? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's that's the way that um, Eric is showing communication through writing. So that would be a really great idea for you to start keeping like a little um, spirit journal and mm-hmm. just start writing and asking questions and and just kind of go from there because he's close enough that he's ready. To- nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. All right, awesome. well, thanks for calling. Thank you. That's exciting. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, six. Four six area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi Elisa. Hi Michelle. Happy New Year. Hi. Hello. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you. This is Miranda. 
and um, I called in a while back. I'm um, trying to sell my condo. It's on the market, and I'm just wondering what Eric says about getting an offer. When's it going to happen? Mm. When's it going to happen? Okay, Eric. <clears throat> Well, Eric says it's in the first quarter of this year. So he says, um, I can't remember what he said last time, but he's saying, like, not much different from what he said last time. There's not much that's, that's changed because he talks about you getting the price for it before the the prices change mm-hmm. or before the prices go down. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I don't know what huh. area exactly you're in, but there's going to be um, some kind of change happen after you sell your place. And you will have awesome. more than one offer because once it comes, it's going Good. to come more than once. Yeah. Nice. Uh-huh. But so the first quarter, um, I oh, I'm hope, I was hoping like um, in the next few weeks by the end of January because um, I think from when we last talked, this was over a month ago, he said it would be soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do, I, feel, I, I do feel Jan, I do feel January much more than further out because when we when we look into the first quarter, so that's between now and you know April. But April, um, mm-hmm. the energy is in the highest part, and it's actually highest over the twentieth. So oh, around wow. around the twentieth to the twenty fourth. Okay, fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed. I'm, yeah. We're crossing our fingers I'll for you, girl. I'll call back and let you know. You've got expansion in your energy, growth in your oh, energy. I... And so when when that's felt, you're real close to something. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. I'm really eager. I'm excited. I found a house I like. I just need to sell this place. <laughs> yeah, you will. You will. Don't you worry. You will. Awesome. Okay, great. Oh, and about the Idaho murder. Oh, oh, oh. I just clicked off. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you can try again. Uh, got somebody from the 412 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Michelle. Hey. Hi. Hi, Eric. This is Lori, um, Jacob's mom. Elisa, yes. um, I appreciate you going on, even though you're not feeling well. well um, thank you. Uh, I just want to talk about, you know, this is our, my first holiday without my son, and Hello. it was difficult. Hello. Um, and, uh, we went away cause I couldn't bear to be in this house where, you know, we had all our Christmases mm-hmm. together. And yeah. while we were away, his bitmoji showed up on Snapchat uh, on his sister's phone. And I was wondering if you could ask Jacob if that was him. Yes. 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 It was so him. So much chills up my body. Yes, it was him. Wow. Yes. Yeah, it just showed out of uh, nowhere. He was there with us on the screen, and then it went away. And, um, and uh, you know, it's it's hard facing this year where my son won't be in yes. this year. And um, yes. I just um, I, I appreciate his smiley faces in the mirror I still get. And, and if he has any other message for me um, or for his dad, he he says he says he loves you. He says I love you, mom. Yeah. He says that yeah. although although our relationships changed, he says it's still yeah. there. It's still there, mom. Um, he says that's that's my gift. That was a gift to the family. Yes. Yeah. Um, he says to let you know that he is there. He says it's like special from him to you. And that messaging in the mirror, the smiley faces. There's yes. going to be letters, too, because he's showing letters, like putting oh, letters. Okay. And commu- so keep doing it. Keep putting smiley faces back to him. Oh. Put letters back to oh, him. I should put them back to him. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll put them back to him. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know. Okay. Yes. All right. Keep, Just if you can tell him I miss him. We miss him so much that, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. He, misses, he misses you guys. He misses the the old, yeah. but he says he's helping with the new. He says, "Hang in there, mom." He goes, "This is oh okay." He wants to let you guys know that he's not in last year. He goes, "I'm not in last he's not, year." What does he, that he mean? This he's year not in with last... you because um, he says he, he knows it's hard for you to have seen the year change 
thinking he's yes. not carrying on in the year with you. But he says, right. no, Mom, no. I'm in this year with you. I'm here right okay. now. I'm Ooh. in this okay. year. That's okay. so good. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Right. Take, Take care. care. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Is Jacob training to be a spirit guide? Yes, he is. Yes, oh, he that's is. good. Yeah. Um, okay. Will he be my spirit yeah. guide then? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh yes, okay. Mama. You got you got a, a boy that's working real hard to work with you. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank that's you, Michelle. Beautiful. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. Good baby. All right. Bye bye. Hi. All right. Uh, six three six area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi guys. It's Alyssa from Missouri. Hi. Hope you guys are all doing well. well. Hi guys. Um, Hi. Eric, a couple couple weeks ago or months ago at this point and Jamie told me about my pregnancy that I would have. I don't know if you guys remember that, but they predicted I was pregnant with a boy and I am. I wanted to give you an update with that. Um, so it was really interesting. They said I would have a healthy pregnancy so far. I'm, you know, far along and I'm doing well. But I um, wanted to check in to see if my guys or Eric or my mom um, and to Jacob's mom, I just want to say like I feel for you. This is the first year going into the first, you know, the 2023 year without my mom. And it's different. It's very different. Yeah. 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 Um, so I just wanted to see if my guys or my mom or Eric had any uh, good tips, tricks, or, and you know, helpful, you know, tips about my pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. What's your mom's first name? Kim. Kim. Okay. Well, she first of all wants to let you know that everything's going to be just fine with pregnancy. Oh. Um, she's, good. she's letting you know that she's, like, she's got the, the first look and holding holding him first. Like, oh, she's sure held she him does. first. Yeah. Oh. So she just wants to let you know that she's she's got her arms in there, so she's been holding them. Um, she says to keep determined. So I don't know if you're going to get real, well, I mean, I've been pregnant. I know what it's like. You get real tired and stuff towards the end. But she says to stay determined to your goal. Um, you'll be able yeah. to make it. She's also talking about you experiencing a lot more peace this year. Oh, oh I just had the chills. Peace. Yeah. While well, you guys were talking, mama. I just was like, it's kind of weird yeah. how my family, other mem- members of my family, because my mom chose to, exit on her own terms and so a lot of my family yeah. members have different emotions yeah. and I just have a lot of most times I won't say all the time because obviously I'm human and I have a variety of emotions but yeah. most of the time I'm like I'm walking out of work today I'm like hey mom I had a good day at work just thinking about you and you know a lot of my family members don't know how to do that you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. a lot of people she's right there with you so and, and oh. keep doing that Keep talking like that with her because she is your guide. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got chills on that yeah. one. Yeah. I just got chills you on my too. legs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad because and I asked Eric to kind of help, help her so you're transition. You're not all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had, you know, I knew Eric before my mom had passed, and I just asked him, like, hey, please help her because I can't. Yep. You know, yep. she's in a place I cannot find. And, yep. you know, so I just, I, I love the relationship and I trust Eric with my life and I'm just very thankful yep. they found each other. Yes. He, he says, um, like, right on it, like, no problem. He says that your mom is, he says that your mom is a pretty funny lady. Yeah, she's, that's she's what got, Jamie pretty, and him talked about last time. They, they're yes. always laugh, belly laughing, like full of laughter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank but you guys so, so, so incredibly much. Yeah. You, why was it her time to go, Eric? Eric says that it was part of like her, her soul had made the mind up that that was it. Like that mm-hmm. was like her choice. So it wasn't oh. necessarily like a, an exit point per se, but she had made it in her life contract that she would be the determination of when it was time to go and that's exactly how she did it that makes a lot of sense uh she was very determined uh she had a mystery illness and we still don't know what it was um she was in a lot of pain 
Eric, what was it? He's saying that it's he's actually showing me the mixture between like arthritis and fibromyalgia. Okay. Oh like my gosh. Yeah. It was in her muscles. She said that she felt like they were on fire and like yeah, oh. yeah. like almost yeah. like neuropathy, but like ten times yeah. worse. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. 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 Oh. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad that they have each other, and I'm glad that you know. And I, I know this sounds so weird, right? Like she was determined; she wanted to go. And now, mm-hmm. if I, if you would have told me that back in April, I would have been like, "Oh my gosh!" But now I can be like, "Yeah, glad she followed through with what she wanted." Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm yeah. no determiner of how and when people need to stay. You know. Yeah. 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 I'm wondering That's if right. people like that have had many lives where. They their lives were taken not by their own volition. Mm-hmm. You're exactly mm-hmm. right, Mom. Eric says, and they're like, okay, says that's time, exactly I'm right. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. But he he said mm. that um, that this was to all be on her terms, and and I will tell you that your mom is so thankful and grateful to you for giving her the freedom to have made that choice and know that you're okay with it. That is a, that Thank is a you. big gift. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her you're very welcome. Thank you for being yeah. my mom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys have, have a great any other way. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Wow. Okay. Uh, 813 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, this is Amy in Minneapolis. Hey. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Hello. Eric. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Well, I, I really relate to the first caller um, that called about their health issues. That is what I am calling about also. Mm-hmm. I had a major surgery six months ago. I think, mm-hmm. Elisa, I've... I've emailed you about it a couple times, but I had a major surgery six months ago, and during it, um, kind of similar to the first callers, um, I had my ureter cut by accident during the surgery. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have, so I've had endless surgeries for the last six months and haven't been able to work and... I've been dealing with a lot of stuff and I have I have another surgery this coming Thursday morning and it's an outpatient surgery and mm-hmm. part of me is wondering if it's going to work if it but maybe it's not for me to know if it's going to or not but if it well, what doesn't kind of surgery? What kind of surgery um, is it? So they removed the stent in my ureter um, right. after, you know, months and months. And within a week and a half, it closed up. And I ended up in the ER in surgery oh, and the stint back in. And mm-hmm. on Thursday, they're going to insert a balloon to try and stretch it out. Right. Um, and hope that that works. Um, if that doesn't work, then I have to have another bigger surgery again. And I could be kind of dealing with everything that I've dealt with for six months of just tubes and bags and a nightmare. So I'm trying to stay positive about it, but I'm having a really hard time because I've been through so much. Yeah. And and I'm worried that, and I'm worried that because I'm feeling, instead of feeling like confident, like this surgery is going to work, because I've been through so many now, I feel mm-hmm. I don't feel positive anymore. Mhm. Mhm. You're afraid to have expectations. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's understandable. Different? You've been um what what Eric is, is saying, first of all, it's so interesting because there is a very big similarity between you and the first caller because there is actually like this is the catalyst for a huge transformation for you, and what Eric calls this is, is like a rebirth. But there is uh, there's still a road ahead of you to heal, 
Um, Eric says, it doesn't show me two surgeries. He actually shows me, or not like a big surgery, shows me one surgery, which is coming up, and then there's something else afterwards that's minor. So it doesn't even okay. feel like a day surgery. It feels like something in an office that is oh, done okay. after that. Um, he says this is the, the road to recovery. It It is so important, he says, that, you know, as hard as it is, that you understand that this is a growth period for you because there is a whole lot of releasing that has taken place through this process. You may not see it right yet because it's been so exhausting and oh. because it's hard to know will there be an end in sight, but, yeah. but there will be. There will be. And so he says the most important thing for yourself right now is the nurturing of yourself. Um, one of the major lessons that he's showing me is that this is about radical self-care for you nice. and yeah. compassion for you and to give yourself that nurturing and to give yourself that okay to be worried that okay to have that fear but then also to say okay it's okay that I feel that way but I know that I'm going to be okay and I know that I'm going to get through this and I know I'm going to be well again because he says okay. you will be and that's okay. part of your self, radical self-care is giving that to yourself as well. But you're going to be okay. Just like we said to the first caller, you've got that same band of energy around you. You're going to wow. be okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything okay. practical that she needs to do to increase her odds of success? Um, actually, Eric said if you can do anything with some of the time that you have right now, is do anything creative because he says that's yep. going to help vibrationally shift you. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. If there's anything that you can do that kind of, whether it's um, artwork or knitting or um, like anything that allows you to get creative. In yeah. That zone, I'm a, I'm right? a, I'm a crafter and I Perfect. make a lot of art and I've had to put it on hold for like the last six months. Oh okay. my God. and I'm just and I'm just starting to get back into that this That's last help. week or so. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So do do yeah. that because what that's going to do like that's a really practical easy thing that you can do and and what it does for you is because that's aligned with you it's going to raise your vibration it's going to allow you to be able to have the strength and the tools, it gives you that extra, like, gunk, that get up and go to get this done, to be able to go through it. It helps the positivity yeah. and everything. So, well, yeah, that really yeah, helps we'll to hear because I haven't had the physical, I don't know, like, enough physically to be able to do that for the last yeah. many months. So yeah. it's yeah. good to hear that it sounds like I'll have that back. And that'll yes. make a world of difference. So yes. thank you. Yes. You're very, very welcome. We'll thank be you. About Lisa, I hope you feel better. Care. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. What the, the the caller asked about the Idaho murder thing and I, I just don't didn't want to let that hang. Eric, do you know what she was <laughs> asking and is there anything you could say? Um, I don't know if she's asking about, because Eric's going into, um, like, is that, did they catch the right person? Right. Like, that's what Eric is saying. And um, uh, so, yes, and, um, but he's saying persons. So there's more than one? Um, more than, maybe not that was actually participating in the act but there's okay. more than one that's involved that knows that has some more information that that has been keeping quiet that was like um maybe a lookout maybe uh oh. somebody part of planning those types okay. of things yeah so you know he looks so much like ted bundy and you know mm. ted bundy died in 1989 and that mm -hmm. would be like perfect setup for this guy being the reincarnation of Ted Bundy, but maybe Bundy, but maybe it's not the case. Any thoughts, Eric? Two reasons. No, he says it's not. 
Um, okay. But he does say that he's, he does say that he's influenced by him. Oh. Um, uh, what I will tell you is that Eric is saying that um, there's some serious mental health, uh, undiagnosed mental health issues. God, I can imagine. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll take somebody from the four four three area code. Maybe I already <laughs> this person. Did I already talk to you? I I heard that voice. Did I that already was talk a man. to you? No, you haven't talked to me yet. This is Denise B. from uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay. But I did hear the man's voice. <laughs> I did. I heard it, too. I did it sound it like Eric? Eric. Eric. Was it? <laughs> Was that you, Eric? He said, he's Eric. Eric, he's been printing his voice all, all over the place today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's heralding well, in peace. <laughs> Happy New Year, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so Denise is oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you feel better soon, Alyssa. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Alyssa. Hi. Um, so this is for my best friend out of Asheville, North Carolina, who is not a computer or does not have a smartphone. Her son at 21 passed in a motorcycle wreck in around 2000. And um, Checking in to see if he has any messages for his mom. His name is Stephen Sorrells Jones, and her name is Sandy Jones. Um, he left five grand hidden in the house or on the property, and she's currently attempting to buy this property and is money short. So she would love to know, is there any way to say where that money is hidden? We've looked. Okay, hang on. Give me a second here. Fascinating. Okay, so are you familiar with the property? Yeah. Okay, is there um, uh, is there a, an overly large sized tree, one particular tree that's like much bigger than the rest of them? Yes, and Feels like I believe stands- that. That one fell. Okay. Oh, fell because oh. It, mm-hmm. and it wasn't removed yet. No, I uh, hang on. I'm not sure if it's been removed. There are some tall Ooh. hemlocks. It's in. It's really borderline woods. Yeah, it's it's not been removed. Um, okay. And it is interesting. You said borderline because it feels like it's borderline on the property. Okay. Like, like where where you would it might still be her property or be this property, but it's like mm-hmm. where you start to walk into like a different okay like a, a different environment on the property, like more trees um different okay. ground a different ground yep. area um yep there's a creek and, and, a creek behind the house. yep okay, when you're looking, look for the biggest tree. And it's in like a, um, they're putting a circle around that tree. Okay. In that area. Okay. Is it in a metal okay. box, do you know? Well, that was a question. We It was thought it might be in, yeah, in something like that. So, yes. Okay, because I can see a metal, like almost like a, it looks like a fishing tin is okay. what it looks like to me. Kind of like a cool. little metal box. Okay. Um, I don't know if maybe a metal detector would help you with that or not, but oh, um, yeah. that, that may be idea. a good idea because the metal is what's popping out here. Cool, cool. And will she buy the house? It, there is some magic that happened today with money. Two sets of well, it, actually. A, there, there's, there's, um, there is abundance, but um, there is there's a bit of a blockage for abundance for her right now. And okay. um what can it's she do? connected to it's connected to emotions. Um okay, oh, let me just okay. see what they can suggest that she does. Okay. Okay, so they're not saying that she won't get the property but 
when you have blockages, sometimes that can create like um, bumps in the road, stalls. Um, mm -hmm. It can just make it harder, not flow as okay. smooth. And okay, there was, what they're mm -hmm. connect well, they're connecting this to like um, um, emotional pain, but some of it's also from younger, like like the uh, yeah. the inner She's child, like from from before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of that, like to really open up her abundance, it would really help her if she could talk to a healer or talk to somebody okay. to help her open that up because it, you'd have to kind of go into that and do a little bit right. of work energetically. Um, the other good. thing that she can do, just to tell her what she can do, is she can write herself a letter to her younger self and oh. uh, in, in all seriousness, have her sit down and write herself a letter and a letter of forgiveness to her younger self and to anyone else to forgive okay. because that's going to help release some resistance for her. That's nice. Yeah. Right, that we gotta close, yeah. Yeah. We got to close the show guys because we're running okay. into the other thank show, you. which is not good, but it's okay, okay. because I love you guys. So y'all, thank, thank you so much, Eric. I love you. I love you. Everyone on the line love here. You. And, um, uh, Send me healing energy, please, because I need to get back to work. Yeah. And um, y'all check out the, uh, Michelle at the Healing H dash dash. Yeah, do that. Art dot com. Love y'all and happy new year. Love you. Happy Bye. new year. Still better, Lisa. Bye. Thank you.